Welcome back to another video of Master IV Fluid course and we're still at the question what kind of IV fluid. Today we're going to talk about an important physiological uh, concepts and uh, very important to understand I feel is as you see here we have extracellular space and this is the intravascular space and the interstitium and we have intracellular space. Okay as all of you know the more hypotonic solution that means the more free water right so that means when it goes in the free water will move from the extracellular space to the intracellular space right that means the cell will swell and that can lead to cell burst and the opposite when there is less free water, the more hypertonic, right? The less free water on the solutions. So when you infuse a hypertonic solution, you drag the water out to the extracellular space. This will lead to shrinking sh cell shrinkage. Okay. I, gu I guess all of you know that already. Now the other concepts that free water whenever it's infused it can move freely from the intra extracellular to the intracellular and vice versa and it follows this rule 60 in the intra cellularly and extra cellularly 60 percent goes here and 40 percent goes here and this divided, of course, into interstitial and intravascular. So here, 75% will go of the 40% goes here, and 25% of the 40% goes here. Let's take a few examples quickly. If I give D5W, First example, the D5W, as we said, it's an isotonic solution, but as soon as we infuse it here, the blood sugar absorb and become like free water, right? So 1000 cc of D5W will follow 600 cc intracellularly, 60%, and 400 cc will become extracellularly. And then the 400 cc, 300 cc will goes into the interstitium, and 25% goes, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 100 cc, which is 25% will go intravascular. How about NS? As you, NS is an isotonic solution, and we said it has minimal or no free water. So it's basically, all of it will be extracellularly. No free water will go into the cell, theoretically. So it will follow this rule, 75% of that, which means 750 cc will go into the interstitium and 250 cc will remain intravascular. So that's the reason when you give a lot of normal saline, you start seeing edema because the fluids start to accumulate more into the interstitium, right? How about LR, lactate ring? It's an isotonic solution, so it will follow the same rule. How about half an S? Half an S has a 500 cc of free water and 500 cc of normal saline. Technically, half an S, you can divide the bag. Half of it is normal saline and half of it is free water, right? So the free water will follow this rule, the 60 and 40. So you have, just focus with me here for a minute. So you have half an S basically is equal 500 mil of water, free water, or uh, plus 500 mil of normal saline. So you can say now 60% of this free water, which is around, let me just bring this, 300 will go intravascularly and 100 will be extracellular. Uh, sorry, 200. And if the 200, right, 
uh, 75%, I think that means 150 will go uh, interstitial and 50 will go intravascular. So only 50 mil will be intravascular. Let me say IV, intravascular. What else? We have 500 of NS. So 75% uh, interstitial and 25% uh, will go into the intravascular. So basically this is plus 125. So you have total 50 free water and 125 of NS based on this will remain intravascularly. So that's how you approach this. At the end, this doesn't matter much as long as you know that intravascularly is, if you give a liter, just a few percentage of that will remain intravascularly. That is to either go interstitial or go intracellular. And you can do this equation on uh, on all kind of solution. We can just follow the same rule. If it's confusing, just please leave me any question in the comment, please. I'll see you next video. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.